Now is utility public works and utility meeting to order. Um, Hushang was not able to make it today, so I will be the chair to this evening. Um, welcome and um, acknowledge all our guests. Um, is there anyone on Zoom or anything? Just wait. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Then we'll ask for a roll call. Uh, Barb Carlin. Here. Tom Hubbard. Here. Louis Serrano. Here. And Roy Mulford. Here. Public comments. Uh, I don't think we have any. Approval of the 11 14 22 Public Works and Utility Committee minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the November 14, 2022 Public Works and Utility Committee. Okay, motion by Hubbard. I'll second. Sure. By Serena. On the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carry. <coughs> Staff report, CIP update. All right. Um, I guess in the packet we have the um, Final assessment report and uh, resolution for the Crestwood Acres neighborhood. Uh, Wintertime, there's not a whole lot of new stuff going on, uh, but we do have some <coughs> real estate uh, plat for the uh, Weston Ave X to J. So that is on a, a village board meeting um, later tonight to approve the, uh, the transportation project plat so that. Uh, uh, real estate acquisition process can begin uh, in hopes of uh, yet getting the east phase uh, constructed this coming uh, spring. And so, I don't know, uh, we're in this building today. Um, we open to the public. So, as far as I know, there wasn't a whole lot of fanfare or uh, people coming no, and going. I expected there to be kind of a flood today for people just coming out of curiosity. But really didn't come to pass, so I guess all my fears were put <laughs> <laughs> sleep. It's okay. Follow the fact that there was, other than a few doors, they were all locked. So. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, they weren't able to see a lot. It's really not a whole lot different than we envisioned to be going forward either. I mean, there's no. some work going on in here, but the whole idea was to have the area more secure right. where the employees are so that people aren't just wandering all over the building. So. I think that's well, this one they could really wander to. Yeah, yeah they could. <laughs> have a lot of places to go. Yeah. Um, utility wise, uh, well seven and eight are the drilling work is kind of ongoing. Um, they got well eight to about 800 gallons per minute. Um, that was after a couple different uh, treatments and uh, working with the uh, well packing and the um, well, seven is still uh, well below capacity. I think they said it was about 500 last they checked. So uh, we got a few more things to uh, work on with the casing and kind of the uh, well hole, or I call it the, the well itself to uh, kind of loosen it up and hopefully be able to get a higher, uh, higher flow out of that as it was initially projected around the 900 gallons per minute. Uh, so that, that, that's still ongoing. And then, um, we did send out a press release today about the well for uh, temporary PFAS treatment. Uh, we did get that system up and running um, last week, Friday, uh, later in the day, uh, with uh, you know some DNR testing and um, startup inspections that was conducted through the month of November. So we were able to get that uh, fired back up. Um, so it should be, I guess, getting uh, better, cleaner water up to our uh, customers, our rate payers. So. And then uh, I guess uh, one item I left off of here, but the sewer lining project on uh, Camp Phillips Road for the interceptor is now heading, making its way down Shorey Avenue. Um, so it's kind of on its last legs and it should be wrapped up by the end of this week. So got her big projects and working on uh, more stuff coming into the new year. Questions or? Comments? <clears throat> okay. 
then let's see. It pretty much went right down the well, Dan's got the street update. Um, you can see on here, we've been kind of trying to tighten things up towards the end of the year. We did have a water main break on Alderson Street that we ended up uh, pouring concrete on for a patch because we couldn't get asphalt anymore. So, yeah, that was kind of a knock on wood. That was, we didn't have any last year, I'm afraid to say that. So we're hoping we don't have any more this year. So, um, but other than that, yeah, we've just been, Part of what we've been up to on the streets is starting to slowly move things to this building. Our shop is the big item. There's stuff in there that the boys have been cleaning out. We're going to have some stuff that's going to get auctioned off down the line on Wisconsin surplus online auction. So it's taking time. Uh, we probably won't get our street department um, here to this building. I'm guessing for at least a couple of weeks yet. We've just got a lot of stuff to do over there. In between uh, now, uh, when we're not going to be plowing snow and salt and that kind of stuff, we've got some retention ponds we want to get some brushing done on. There's windfalls that need to be taken down, dead trees that are leaning, stuff like that. So that's what we're going to be pursuing next, weather permitting. So, um, and in the packet, I put down uh, our fall curbside leaf and brush pickup. If you looked at that 2021 it cost us approximately ninety three thousand six hundred sixty three dollars this year it was ninety six thousand three hundred sixty that is a number when i come up with that number we have wages but also what i use is i use the equipment costs that wisconsin dot uses an average cost for the pieces of equipment that's how we come up with this dollar amount so if we were going to rent the back trucks and using the state rate um, this is what it comes out to. So, and we picked up over 6,000 cubic yards of leaves and over 1,000 cubic yards of brush this year in the fall pickup. So it takes us a month. It takes a lot of energy and time to do it, but it is well received by the residents. I think it's something we enjoy. Yes. So. And then um, those costs do go into a recycling grant that we submit to the state. So uh, by doing this process, we do get money back from the state for it too. Mm -hmm. Another thing with the fall, um, with the leaf pickup, um, Sue's ginseng purchased all of the leaves that we picked up this year. They had uh, Kafka, who grinds our brush for us, hauled them all, and he gave us a dollar cubic yard. And I apologize, I didn't put in here how much it was. It came over $4,000 worth. So we're getting a little bit of a recovery on it. And then we have some rows of compost from last fall and this spring's leaves that Randy Warden from Warden Enterprises wants to purchase. So I'm guessing it's going to be in the amount of around 5,000 that we'll get a return on. I talked to him today. So we are getting something back out of this too, which is good. So don't tell the other communities because we don't want them to hoard <laughs> our sales, okay? <laughs> I just have to know loose or compacted leaves. You know, where, did you compact them? Like you when, they come, or nothing? when they come out of that truck, they're like a bale. Oh, they are. A back that's, truck tight. That's tight. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. We don't bail them like the city does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got eight bucks from my house, so that's for sure. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the things. The other thing, too, I had thrown a picture on there of East Nick Avenue, and I did talk to, it's not much to look at, but that's looking to the, to the east from where we left off. Excuse me. That's looking to the west. The driveway on the left is Steve Groshek's property, and I talked with him. His nephew, Tyler, is the one that built the house. Uh, that's why we redid 2,200 feet of Nick. He's a 40, he's 40 acres to the east from where Tyler's driveway was, and he's talking about building next fall. He doesn't have plans submitted yet, and it would be Cronenwetter to issue the building permit. So next year, if everything goes right, he's looking to put a house up in the fall there. So we'll probably look at possibly having to address more of Nick Avenue. I can't help but one more question. I'll shut up. Sure. Is that the driveway you and I and Keith and Scott were at? Or I mean, do you think? Uh, which that the guy that we live in the west here? Yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. He's east of where the son, his nephew was. The first place on the south side was his nephew's, and place. the next one is Steve's. Oh, wow. The place we stopped is further. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably like here. That's, yeah. 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 It's a lot. It's, we couldn't hardly even turn around that day. That looks really nice. Good job. 
So, yeah, so I talked with Corona a little, a little bit and let them know too, but if they get a building permit and something happens, we might have to look at doing this project again next year. Okay, that's what I was just gonna ask, is that road been repaired to where they wanna build or no, okay? We have about another quarter mile. Yeah. And that's still part of us. <laughs> Half of us. Half of us, I say part of us. <laughs> we, we, yeah, in total we have about a mile left. That is, this is a little dope. No, so this would be about a quarter mile from where we left off this past year right. to yes. this point. So then we'd still have three quarters of a mile left until we hit our reed wrinkle boundary. So, we'll so is there any land on our side that anybody's gonna build on? So, I mean, I, we're putting yeah, in all so this money. I'd like to think someday we, We'd get some there was you know, people there last year that they logged on the they logged on the north side and there was i met with a couple i just happened to run into them out there they were looking they were talking about building i don't know if they purchased the property or it fell through or what okay so it is buildable it's not wet or, i mean it's buildable on our yeah side. That's that's some, that's somewhat some well buildable. everything is yeah we got through the swamp now and uh, so there is buildable land you know i just i was just thinking to myself, gee, we're doing this road, which I understand we have to do because half of it's ours, whether we have buildings on it or not. But I was going, boy, it would be nice if it could at least get some development out of it from our side, you know, not just growing wetters, you know. The fortunate thing is to the east of there, on the East End where Dan Kelner owns property, he took quite a bit of the fill and he's looking for more yet too. Okay. So it, it saves us a lot of money if we can just truck it down the road a quarter mile and dump it. So we'll see what happens. So that's kind of where we're at with streets. Um, we'll see what this week brings. <laughs> They're talking rain and snow, so but the tribe does a good job with everything. So questions? Like that water break on horse, where was that on on all uh, Just north of Weston Avenue. Yeah. Half a block, a little more than that. Okay. Yeah, we just poured concrete in there because yeah. Yeah. So West, this is the stop sign at Weston Avenue heading uh, south. So hospitals like off to the left here. You know, you'd be going downhill to get to the high yep. school. Yeah. And where was it? It's right in that patch. So this okay, is the patch. right there. Okay. And then so that's the stop it's sign at Weston Avenue. <laughs> is that is that part? Is that water? Is that old? That. It, yeah, it's a, it's a cast iron, and um, that trench is, uh, they pretty much blasted it and then put the pipe right back on blasted rock. So I don't know, Keith, we have probably, what, a dozen repair sleeves, at least through that uh, stretch. So it's part of it. Yeah, there's been a lot of repairs on that over the years. Yeah. And then, uh, so I guess it's part of our uh, Weston Avenue project with the Rothschild there between Alderson and Birch. Uh, replacing the water main up uh, on Alderson there, then north to Summit Avenue uh, is included in that. So we'd be replacing this water main in about two years. So. But there is rock through there. It, it's rock, yeah. So they just didn't. As I recall, I was like, yeah. they didn't bed it very well. So it's like the increasing temperature cracks. pushes on itself. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. And uh, policy discussions, did you want to talk about the Crestwood Acres final resolution for special assessment? Yeah, um, and I guess I'll skip over the utility operations. Um, Josh, unfortunately, wasn't able to be here today. He had a family uh, an emergency, but uh, I don't know if you had any questions looking at that. But, uh, any questions on the report? We do have a, there's a Red Mountain Metro, um, I always get this wrong, Sanitary District um, meeting tomorrow. Um, they've been noticing some pH spikes in wastewater from the village of Weston. Um, we've been in contact with Wasa Tile. I think we've kind of narrowed it down that they've got something that comes through. So they'll also be attending the meeting tomorrow. <coughs> we, we started conversations with them about uh, uh, what, what they need to do differently. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of ongoing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I was say, didn't you have a past issue with them also? Well, there was a more recent issue with, uh, was it 
crystal finishing down in Molson. They were getting a high strength discharge of some type into the remote metro treatment stream, and that was kind of negotiated in terms of who was going to pick up some of the extra costs on the, uh, uh, you know, on the treatment. And, I guess there was actually some damage to a sewer pipe or sewer pipes um, in the interceptor system that was being resolved. So that that was maybe the more recent thing that's happened. But we have had other issues with remote or with uh, Wasser Tile in the past with high solids, suspended solids in their discharge. Mm. The high pH thing is maybe maybe they, that was also going on, but uh, in terms of being detected at the treatment set, treatment plant. I don't know that that has occurred yet. So I guess we should be better we should remember how that got handled with uh, yeah. with crystal finishing in the most of these situations as this discussion goes on. Any questions? Comments? <clears throat> okay, that was Okay, so for the Crystal Acres project, um, I guess the one thing we assess, the special assess, is the driveway approaches. So I uh, ran through the calculations now that we had all the pay applications and um, nice invoices for the project. Um, our original estimated rate was five dollars and eighty-six cents. The Final calculate rate was five dollars ninety seven cents, and then for our ordinance we use the lesser of the two, so we use the original estimate of five eighty six. Um, so I, I guess in reality, the uh, the impact to the um, homeowner should be um, fairly close to what the original estimated assessment was. Um, the only difference would be. If, you know, there was an alteration to the driveway. I know some people wanted the driveways a little wider when they went in. So there might be a slightly wide, slightly more. Some people had second driveways that then they somewhat uh, just eliminated as part of the project. So they only got assessed for the one driveway that went in and the other driveway was removed because they didn't need it anymore or they didn't want to pay an assessment for it. So <laughs> probably the case. Um, so I guess one thing I did want to bring up is the project initially did have sidewalk included. So when we have sidewalk, I, I don't, we don't assess the five foot width of that sidewalk through the driveway because we'd be putting that in no matter what. Um, so it, when we removed the sidewalk from the project, um, I guess I, I left that off the assessment. I kind of credited five feet for everybody. I wasn't sure if there was, you know, that way it's still, a, you know, an apples to apples comparison from original project to final project. Um, if we put that back in, I guess the average driveway would get about an extra $586. Uh, currently, the average assessment is just over $1,400. So if we added that back in, the average assessment would go to $2,000. So um, I don't know if anybody has an objection to crediting people for that five feet, or uh, you think I should put that in and just add it to everybody's. Have you done in the past? I was just going to say, I'm always about consistency yeah. because so, so, so the point you get is. Yeah, in, in, the past, in the past, the sidewalk went in. I guess we haven't had a project where we initially designed it, had it, and then removed it. Um, but you've done projects where there isn't a sidewalk or never was intended to be a sidewalk. Yeah, so in there, then you try to find that common um, uh, slope intercept. You know, so you don't, we don't necessarily always go back to the right of way line on a project. Um, you know, we might go five feet short or match into, you know, what's there. We don't always. Well, yeah, I guess my concern, and maybe nobody will realize it, but if you do another project that doesn't have a sidewalk and you assess the, the homeowners that full five feet or whatever, um, and somebody said, oh, gee, we didn't have to do that anymore. We've got an issue. And that was, was that basically resident related that they didn't want the sidewalk, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the board just voted to remove sidewalk from the project. So, so I mean, they didn't want it yeah. at first, and so they didn't get it. 
So are they going to get free driveway? Then? I don't know. We're gonna, we only got charged for the sidewalk. We're yeah, we were yeah, correct. We don't assess for the sidewalk, so that's. But now you don't have sidewalk. Correct. The residents didn't want sidewalk. No, I don't know. I, I have a hard time with that one sometimes. Especially, I think most of these residential streets with reconstruction should have sidewalk. So in past projects where you don't have a sidewalk, you assessed a hundred percent. Yeah. So like a patchy lane, we don't. We didn't put sidewalk in. Um, I'd have to look, but I don't believe we went all the way back to the right of way line either. You know, we, so I think there it was based on the, the slope intercept. So some people maybe only had a, a 10 foot impact. Other people maybe had a 15 foot impact and it, they'd be assessed for what that was, not the... And, and in the future, if you don't have sidewalk, you'd assess 100%. Correct. Yeah, I guess that I'd vote to assess the whole thing. <laughs> well, that's the thing. yeah. Like I said, I I have a real concern with you know you do fund for someone and then all of a sudden you've got it coming up and somebody figures it out, um, then you have set a precedent for it. And it's yeah, because I don't know how you would. I mean, if a resident came in and said, why did I get assessed for it and they didn't last time? Sure. I don't want to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I want it to be consistent. It, you know, it's, it, no, this is the way we always do it. That, however, however that, you know, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. you know, whatever you do with it yeah. in the past is what you should do with it here, I think. I, that's the approach I would rather have. I realize it raises a little bit from the time. That's what will happen the next project. We don't have a sidewalk, right? Sure. Yeah. Or they're going to not walk sidewalks because no. yeah. you know, it, that's already might become an issue. I don't know. But, yeah, I agree with that too. If I have a question, should I speak kind of from here or should I give a public comment? Or? You should probably give a public comment. I go up there for yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Luis lives in this neighborhood. <laughs> okay. You should probably recruit. <laughs> I'm not going to vote on it, but I. <laughs> so, so, so this has recused himself. Yeah, yes. is, uh, speaking as a resident. So speaking as a resident who lives at 6105 Rodney Street in this neighborhood, I guess my question would be, would as much of the driveway have been removed had there not been a sidewalk project? Because the, the, the area for the sidewalks had been removed before there was a vote Correct. to remove that from the project. And not all the residents in this neighborhood didn't want sidewalks. I had written and said I did want a sidewalk. Yep. Um, but yeah. So, so yeah, correct. To that point, um, the you know, the slope intercept I referred to, or the the cut back on the street, wouldn't necessarily have been all the way back to the right of way line. It it could have been shorter. It might have been five feet short of the right of way line for many houses. So the. Um, but correct to the resident's point, um, the uh, the removals were done prior to that change by the board saying, so we had already cut and removed the driveways, so we had to go back to that point. There wasn't a chance to um, cut shorter, I guess. Would be the, it's already gone. It was already gone, so we had to replace it anyway. So would you maybe thought would be that where you cut extra, that that is what we would pick up? And that's, I guess that's what I'm saying is, you know, the original cuts were made based on sidewalk going in. Had we known in February that that wasn't going to happen, those cut lines would have been adjusted. They might have been in front of where the sidewalk ever would have been. So, so that five feet never would have been removed to begin with. And I, but it changes things, so I, I guess I, <laughs> and I, and I just want to say, I, I have no problem with whatever the community decides. I, I, I want to make sure that's clear. I just wanted to make sure that that information was clear because there were a lot of things happening with that project before that vote happened. It was a very last minute vote that some of the people in the neighborhood were really frustrated with and had decided to make those changes. And so I didn't vote on those changes and I won't vote on this, but thank you. I, I just get based on that. I would be. I'm now. I go back the other way and say, well, if they wouldn't have it moved, they would have had the expense and. That would give them the adjustment of what it would have been if they hadn't cut it or the site work. Yeah. 
not complete if there's, you know. Okay. Yeah, I have now. I, I know what you're saying now when you have to go back. <laughs> go back if you have to your, do your initial cuts on it, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, yeah. You just have a less steep driveway. All right, well, thank you for bringing that up. I guess I didn't think about the fact. I'll need to add that before this goes to the board. Yes. But yes. So. Yes, that definitely makes a difference. I mean, <laughs> otherwise, I, I would not have been in favor of it at all. All right, is this something we need to um, yeah, so I guess I to recommend for the board? Correct, yeah. Thanks for looking to have a recommendation for the board to then okay, what approve the resolution. I'll move to recommend the village board approve resolution 2022-026, levying special assessments for driveway approaches for the Crestwood Acres reconstruction project. I'll second. Second. Motion to the number. Second by Second On the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried and please note that was, was not not voting typically not voted. It was refused. Thanks for the input. That was all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't realize that it was cut farther. I mean, didn't really yeah. think about that. And yeah, the removals were all done right away, so that all the clearing, grubbing was taken care of. So. It, it was a mess for a while. It was. <laughs> okay, so Schofield and Avenue intersection studies phase one intersection control evaluation ICE results. Uh, so in uh, late November here, we got the results from the phase one ICE study from uh, MSA for the uh, Schofield Ave and Mesker as well as Schofield Ave and Ryan Street uh, intersections. Uh, I guess here. Both intersections, the uh, recommendation is to uh, further analyze each of them for improved two-way stop control and then also looking at roundabout alternatives. Um, based on the current traffic counts, the tra traffic signals themselves were not deemed warranted. Um, I know that was a question uh, Trustee Zagami had asked me, um, too, is even though I guess the initial study says they're not warranted. If that was some, an option, we still wanted to have MSA look at. We could, um, but the initial findings are that the, the traffic just isn't there yet for, um, I guess, primarily on the minor streets, um, Musker and Ryan, for there to be a need for um, traffic signals. Where are you looking possible roundabout? At the intersection. So they'd look at, uh, you know, is there a way to add a turn lane on those side streets to improve the flow? Or, you know, would you put a, a roundabout at, at that intersection? Um, so for both of them, those would be the two alternatives they'd look at for the second half of the study. That's an expensive alternative. I would think turn lanes would work much better. Yeah, so, so they'll look at that and they'll provide estimates and kind of con concept layouts and, you know, that come back before we'd even, you know, look at doing anything else with the... Do we, do we have enough room for roundabouts? I think in both spots, we probably do. Um, there might be, I, no matter what, there's probably always going to be some right of, real, right away real estate uh, needs, but... Uh, you know, the north side of Schofield Ave generally is uh, fairly green. Um, you know, nothing's built right up to it. Um, the south side, especially at Mesker, is a little more built up, especially right at that southwest corner. Um, at Ryan, there's a larger easement where the, uh, kind of before you get to the Mountain Bay Trail. So I think there, there's probably more room than at Mesker. And do we, we don't have a final plan at Fuller yet either, do we? We don't know. So, I mean, uh, these ones were looked at kind of independently. So, everything's looked at somewhat independently. The, the, the only, yep. I was the only, I, I, I don't, I just would like maybe bring up for discussion. I don't know what your, everyone else's thoughts are. One of the thoughts I had when I looked through this is I said, we're looking at Fuller, but we're not quite sure what we're going to do. Yep. And now we're looking at two more that are like the next 
logical ones down the road, right? Yeah, they're kind of sand. Yeah, Fuller be sandwiched in between these two. And I started saying to myself, is this, should this all be tied together? Because they go both one, two, three, right down the road as we, yeah. you know, we travel. Is that, or are we? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, so. Well, no, I, I guess that's a good point. I, I know that. I see that uh, President Maloney has his hand up, but I, with respect to that roundabout versus a signalized intersection, there are turn lanes. There's a left-hand turn lane in Schofield Avenue right now that already adds to the right-of-way or the roadway need. So I don't think my thought is that you know that left turn lane goes away with a roundabout. So you probably already have pretty much the right-of-way that's needed. I don't know. That that's part of the study. Part of what the study would determine. And I guess you got to remember that wouldn't be the electric, you know, all electronics and the signalization that's required with a, you know, with a signalized intersection. That's that's a costly part of a intersection project too. So that's part of the reason for doing the study. So I'll defer. Okay. So I just only so just hearing this is it also Jay? Is that the thoughts? I mean, it's a county road. They yeah. participate big time. I, you know, yeah, we can add that in. I mean, going back to Mesker, there's only one turn lane, right, going east, but there's not one going west. So if I'm coming from the west going, I know, from the east going west, there's not a turn lane that gets me, you know, to go south. Th there is. There is? Yep. Oh, so there's two each way. Okay. Correct. Yep. So kind of I would agree on the signalization there. Um, and whether Ryan needs or not, I don't know, but I, I just know Mesker's a stinker to get across. And then I thought, uh, um, Jay, too. And as long as you're at it, why don't you just grab Schofield and Camp Oaks right away? Yeah. All right. So these ones were the first two that uh, I guess were authorized. If we want to look at more, we can always add. I, I don't know. I, my, that was my overall thought. Yep. I just said, are we looking at this piecemeal instead of the whole Schofield oh, Avenue sure. and what's coming? You know, and then I said to myself, and really, you know, Fuller's going to be the first one to be right to actually be developed, right? Yeah. Um, and then I said, are we going to, is it, we want something so it's consistent and flows traffic, not just now, but in the future, right? Yeah. Um, because that is only going to get, well, I just assume the schools are there. That, that's not ever going to be a, a less traffic scenario, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm not against doing the studies on this. That was my only, what I was going to throw out to say, did, should that all be looked at versus just. Yeah. I mean, generally, they, Suggest I think it's about every ten years you revisit your major corridors. To just make sure you know. Hey, in 2023 here, it's maybe not necessary yet, but in 2030, it might be. Yep, now now is the time to do it. So does the study help with funding? It, it would. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Okay. Yeah, but so I guess that's part of it. Is if we have a study that says traffic signals aren't warranted, <laughs> and we want to put them in. We're likely not going to get funding for that, but if it says a roundabout is warranted, we would likely be able to get funding for that. So, so that's the caveat. And uh, I guess the other part is, is if we want it to still install traffic signals, there's nothing that says you can't. Um, so it was brought to my attention that like our Howland Ave and the Camp Phillips Road, you know, if you actually did a by the YMCA there. Um, those signals technically weren't warranted um, they were they were still installed because they were you know the village decided to put them in but they weren't uh, they didn't meet the traffic warrants at the time so so we can still do it it doesn't create an extra liability or anything like that but, but could we take those out and move them somewhere else? <laughs> uh, yeah i you might be able to reuse them I, I, i'm serious because yeah. they aren't warranted there but maybe we thought the y would bring more traffic it, it could be or maybe people but, you know, complain enough about dropping off their kids mesker for, mesker for sure needs help yeah. yeah i mean a mesker was close um from, you know kind of what i could tell just shy so maybe. during the study <laughs> yeah how long is the study so they look at it in, in October. They, they looked at the traffic flow um, this okay. past October. We just need to, next time if we know that, we need to put a newsletter out to get divert traffic over there. <laughs> so, yeah. Close off some other streets, for it. Any other comments? Is there any recommendation or just 
Yeah, I mean, if, if not, I guess we'd look at just continuing with those, um, the two options they have, but if anybody wants to add in. Would you want to add to put in the other ones or wait? I, I mean, so if we, I guess as far as number of years. makes sense, yeah. and, and, and when President Maloney brings up Jay too, that, yeah. yeah, I would agree that's, <laughs> you know, those are probably the four you think of when you, you know. So, so to do that, we'd have to get a different uh, contract with them. So the contract currently has the phase one and phase two for the Mesker and Ryan intersections. So we either ask them to move forward with kind of those uh, concept designs, or I guess we could also ask them to hold off on it. And, yeah. and what, and what you said every 10 years, they look at the quarter and I don't have it. That, that's the recommended, you know, every 10 years to kind of just revisit it to make sure. sure. What was the last corridor plan? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I, I, I was gonna say, I have no idea, but. Yeah. Um, and then is it is the village generally trying to move towards roundabouts or are we not trying to move I, I I in general I think we're no, like, <laughs> my recommendation is to move forward to whatever is the best for traffic flow through the village, you know. Okay. And the best in the most cost effective way. If that makes sense. Well the safest way too. The safest way. The safest yeah. way, yeah. I know that roundabouts are considered a safer alternative to a Four way intersection because it goes into T bone collision. Um, you never seen me ride on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? You have never seen me drive on a roundabout. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well and, and because of the multiple schools there, yeah, that, I mean, yeah. that, you know, that definitely, if you're going to talk about where are you transporting your kids the most heavily, that's your, probably your corridor, right? Yeah. For small kids, um, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't not want to do the studies, but I would like. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> I, I guess my thought was I'd like to see the whole. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So they can complete these two, and then we can add, you know, future, you know, other intersections next year. I think it would, it would be good to at least get these two done and then with the idea that go forward so what is car I guess I'll move to recommend the village board approve continuing Schofield Avenue intersection studies for Mesker and Ryan Street to have phase two ice analysis completed as recommended by NSA. Um, and in addition, uh, to request that staff consider additional intersections at Fuller and J um, to possibly be pursued for traffic studies and future improvements. Although is Fuller, I don't know, Fuller maybe is part of the other package, right? I don't know. <laughs> Or, or do you already have a flood study for? We, we don't know. I guess that would have been included with any reconstruction of Fuller Street. Okay. I don't know if you got all that to this. <laughs> I'll second for the sake of conversation. Um, so, would we normally do a traffic study of well, Wall as part of the Fuller Street reconstruction, we're talking about lining up with Old Coster or whatever. Correct. Would there be some form of a, a study to discuss that there intersection? Would, there would be, yeah. So that'd be included as part of the consultant's scope of work for that project. And then, Jay, if we were going to study that, we'd probably have to do something joint with the county because of the county being involved there. Correct, yeah. So if I understand your recommendation right you're basically approving what to move forward with this existing one but then just say staff consider the future what other studies we can do involving those other intersections but not necessarily including it as part of this oh yeah correct no i just said yeah i just asked that staff consider those for future so that studies. shouldn't create any issues with just this solely correct okay um all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. So carried. Okay. Please, I am staying. Back in the real Yeah. Okay. Okay, then we are to the water utility, right? 
Yep. You need a fit construction service contract. Yeah, I guess uh, we have the design for the meter pits in uh, 2021. Um, through some of the uh, designs in uh, 2022 with some uh, unique back and forth between the DNR and Department of Safety and uh, Professional Services. Um, they kind of each thought the other person was responsible for uh, these meter pits. So we finally got that figured out and uh, we should be out to uh, bid these in uh, January, February. And I guess the proposal attaches then for the construction oversight from uh, Clark Dietz on a temporary basis. Their uh, cost is based on 12 weeks of, so, um, I guess, uh, inter intermittent or uh, part-time uh, inspection. Andy, uh, it's your pleasure. I'll make a recommendation to the village board to approve contract <coughs> amendment number one with Clark Dietz for the meter pit upgrades project for not to exceed a price of $63,000. All certain. Okay. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Okay. Uh, next meeting date would be Monday, January 9th at 4.30. And then again on February 13th at 4.30. Anyone have any concerns or topics for future meetings? Uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, one thing for the next meeting dates, we are tentatively looking at having a uh, public information meeting for the Weston Avenue project on January 4th, so it's a Wednesday. It's not, it's not required for the committee members to be there, but if you want to attend. Okay, so January 4th is a public hearing. A public meeting, not a hearing. Public yeah. hearing. Uh, be more or less just an update for those property owners on where we're at. And Any topics for future meetings? Remarks from staff? Remarks from the administrator? Uh, well, just to remind everybody, I think Michael mentioned there's a special <laughs> plan commission and board meeting tonight with the board's um, require, request of the board being to uh, consider the adoption of the transportation project plan, AKA uh, right of way plant for the uh, Western Avenue project. So that will allow that project to continue towards um, construction bidding this spring. So um, if you care to attend, you certainly may. Um, the plan needs to be adopted in order for right of way acquisition activity to, to go forward. So um, I guess we'll see how that all goes and try to give everybody an update on where, where the design stands as well as part of that discussion. All right, remarks from staff. Wow. Thanks. The only other thing I forgot to mention here is uh, for our joint project with Rothschild from Alderson to Birch, the original, uh, there was a, a roundabout study done at the Alderson Weston Avenue um, intersection where the round of, mini roundabout was recommended to be included in the final design. That's what was approved as part of the design documents with MSA. Um, my understanding is the village of Rothschild may be wanting to revisit that topic of whether a roundabout is or is not necessary to be installed there. So I think the idea that may be something that comes up if they are reconsidering that. Okay. Questions or concerns? Okay. Um, and yeah, the intersection is one quarter rock request and three quarters Rothschild. Okay, okay. 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 committee members. Okay. Any announcements? So, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. We are adjourned.